Okay, so in this particular lesson, we're going to learn how to draw some 3D shapes using another variable. That's right. Now we're going to introduce a third variable called Z. And that then allows us to change the orientation of our axes. So in the past with the two variable graph, it was always X and Y. Now think of this as a three-dimensional piece where the X and Y are the parts on the floor, okay? So think about the X being here, okay, along the floor, the Y being along the floor, and then think of Z as like the height, okay, or coming up the floor, out of the floor. So when you're doing this, um, what I have done in my pictures only graphed out the positive directions of the axes, if you need negative ones, then you put them in as needed. And if you think about it, the negative x would just be going the opposite way, like there. So this is like negative x. You don't get to write this down in your notes. Negative y would be this way then, of course. And then negative z would be going down, okay, like underground. So also note the various points on this sketch. Notice I have a point p, okay. And the point p here seems like it's sticking out. Uh, in 3D space. It is because P is a point that has three coordinates X, Y, and a Z. Now notice if I were to drop P straight down until we reach a Z coordinate of zero. So if I drop it down to like the floor, we reach the Z coordinate of zero, we arrive at the point Q. And that point Q then sits in the X, Y plane. So think back to two dimensions. Because the Z is zero, it only sits in the X, Y plane. And the X, Y plane corresponds to all the points where there's a zero Z coordinate, or like I said, the floor. Okay? We can also start at P and move in the other two directions as shown. And if we move it in one of the directions to the X, Z plane, that would be... Yes, that would be where the y value is 0, so we get the coordinate s. And we can also move it to the other way over here, r, where it's the yz plane. That's the point r, and of course, in this case, the x coordinate is 0. Now, collectively, the xy, the xz, and the yz planes are sometimes called the coordinate planes. And in the remainder of this class, you'll be able to, or you'll need to be able to, deal with various coordinate planes. So make sure you get a good grasp of this 3D model right now. Um, also, if you look at like second year math courses for a university, they might talk about this called the projection of P. So also point Q is often referred to as the projection of P in the XY plane. Likewise, R is the projection of point P in the, that's right, YZ plane. And then finally, S is the projection of P in the XZ plane. Good. Now, many of the formulas you've learned in two-dimensional kind of uh, coordinate geometry have natural extensions in 3D. So, for instance, the distance formula in 2D. Oops. Remember the distance formula in 2D? Yeah, the square root of, and then you look at the difference in the x values, all squared. Look at the difference in the y values, all squared. And similarly in the 3D one, this was a typical math contest problem. That's right, the difference in the x values, all squared. The difference in the y values, all squared. And then because it's 3D, there is, yes, the difference in the z values, all squared. Okay? And then similarly, we had the equation of a 2D circle. We learned that in pre-calculus 12. That's x squared plus y squared equal. Oops, I forgot. Should have read the question first. Center h comma k. x minus h all squared. Remember that? y minus k all squared. Remember that? And then that equals to r squared. Well, if I made it 3D, then we have a perfect ball or sphere. And notice that there's a third coordinate called z. So I would just extend this equation to x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared plus z minus l 
all squared equal to r squared. And I want you to note that the 3D coordinate system is often denoted by this, r, not 2, but cubed for three dimensions. Likewise, the 2D coordinate system was often denoted by r2, or the two-dimensional system, and the one coordinate system, of course, is just denoted by r. Okay. And as you might have guessed, then a general n-dimensional coordinate system is r to the power of n. Okay, so understanding all this, I'm going to ask us to see if you can start graphing the following. Okay, notice on the next page, I'm asking you to graph out certain things. Now remember, we have a three-coordinate um, axis now. The x is always this one that goes kind of... Uh, towards, I guess, you. Y is like the one that's typically X from before. And then remember, going out of the page or up the vertical third dimension now is always Z. So how do we graph out these things? Okay, now let me show you how to graph out cylinders first. You're like, cylinders? Well, there are different types of cylinders now. So let's see what I mean. So sometimes it's actually helpful to graph out um, like, for instance, y equals x squared. In 2D, y equals x squared is the typical parabola. That's right, where this is the x and this is the y. So if I asked you to draw that out on this particular axis, hopefully you can see that this part here corresponds to this. And then the part that's in blue here corresponds to this side. So there's my lovely parabola. This is a parabola on like the floor, right? But then remember, it's y equals x squared for all values of x. Or not for it's for, for all values of z. This is this true for no matter what value of z occurs. So if I think about this as z equals to 1, there would also be another parabola right here. Okay? And another one at 2, and another one at 3. And then if I were to connect them all together, hopefully now you will see the following. I didn't draw that very well, did I? Should have drawn it like this. Whee, parabola. And so you'll see this. I hope you can visualize how this is like a cylinder. Okay? So, it's like having multiple parabolas, right? I could draw another one here if I wanted to. Whee! Another one, and so on, and so on. And you can see that I'm creating a cylinder. You don't need to actually do those blue lines if you don't want to. Okay. Okay, the next one now. X squared plus Z squared equals 1. So this represents... Ah, this looks like an equation of a circle, right? In 2D... So then x and z, we have a circle of radius 1. So if I said this is, let's say, 1 again, and this is 1, and I hope you can see that we're drawing a circle of radius 1. And this circle is throughout, so it's over here as well, and over here as well. So hopefully you can see that if there's a whole bunch, I get this 3D shape. In this case, that circle is repeated a lot, and then now you get this long, long, infinite cylinder. Okay? An infinite cylinder. So this goes on forever that way and forever that way. And then finally, the hyperbolic cylinder. Hopefully you can see this from conics. This looks like a hyperbola in 2D. X, Y, Z... And this is y and z, so hopefully you remember this is a hyperbola that opens sideways like this. And then if you think about over here, the negative, that's over here. And then it would be the same throughout the x's, because in this case, well, there's no x variable here. So if you think about me going like this, I'm going to draw a whole bunch of more hyperbolas this way. So you see, you get this. And then similar here, similar here, for the hyperbola that way. And this is like an outside kind of cylinder. So, yeah, there you go. Okay. 
So I know I'm kind of weird right now, but remember in each of these cases, I only had two variables. One of them was not in the equation, so therefore we just have to kind of go and copy, 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 paste. Ooh, let's take a look at this type here. These are called cones, okay? Now, in this particular case, you have to think, hmm, how am I gonna draw these shapes? Um, one of the strategies of doing this is to let z equal to some sort of constant, and then actually graph out the two-dimensional shape at each of the different levels of z. And then after that, you just connect them all together to create your 3D shape. So for example, if I let z equal to zero, let's just say, okay? So at z equals zero, that's the floor. You get x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals to zero. Really, that's just, <laughs> what, zero, right? x has to be zero, y has to be zero in order for this to be true. So you just have a point. Now, what's more interesting now is what happens at z equals to one, okay? If it's z equals to one, look at, we have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus, uh, let's say z squared over c squared. Let's just pretend that's equal to one, right? Or actually, you know what I could do? I could actually make it equal to c, yeah. Forget this is one, let's make it even to c. That maybe that's easier. So c squared over c squared equals to zero. That allows us to get this lovely equation. Yes, this is much nicer. And then that is the same thing as what you learned in conics. That is a, perhaps a circle, perhaps an ellipse, probably an ellipse since a and b are different. So let's say here at the value of C, whatever C would be, notice you're going to get a whole bunch of ellipses. Right? This is an ellipse in 2D. So no matter what value of Z you have, you're going to ellipse, 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 ellipse. So can you visualize how this works? That's how you get a cone. And by the way, I could have made it uh, negative too, right? Because negative value all squared still becomes positive so I guess I have the similar thing on the other side so you get the same feature on the negative values of this this is kind of extending the z-axis way down this could be z equals to negative one this could be z equals to negative two whatever right z equals to negative three and so on so in this particular equation you got this uh, I guess a double napped cone all right now I'm going to ask you to try number two your, on your own. Okay. Let's see what you can get. Think about what you can do with this lovely equation. Probably in this case, you want to let x be some sort of constant. So x, y, z. But if I let x equal to zero, I get y squared plus z squared equals zero. Once again, just this lovely point here. All right, I can do this where instead of having it equal to c, I can set let x equal to one. So I get y squared plus z squared minus one equals zero, or y squared plus z squared equals to one. That seems to be a circle, right? Of radius one. That's when x equals to 1. Let's pretend x equals to 1 here. Think of it having a circle of radius 1. So imagine a circle around here like this. This would also be true for a negative 1, I believe. So even if I extend this way at negative 1, I get a circle. I can try another value. Let's say at, uh, let's just pick a nice value. 2, right? y squared plus z squared. This will be equal to 2 squared or 4. So that means at 2, you get a larger circle. And this is the same thing at negative 2. Another larger circle. So if you think about it, it'll be a cone that looks like this, stretching out along the x-axis. Okay. Now I know this is kind of weird, but in 
um, what they call multivariable calculus. You're learning multivariables, so you want to be able to see how these 3D shapes look like. No longer are we doing 2D, now it's 3D. Alright, so let's move on to different shapes. I've got more for you. Yes, type 3 is called the paraboloid. Not the parabola, but the paraboloid. So once again, when I do something like this, I want to label my axes first. And then to help you out, it's always nice to see if you can find the 2D shape. And then just graph out the 2D shapes in layers and then connect them together to make a 3D shape. So like for instance, in this case, z equals x squared plus y squared. I'm going to let z equal to 0. Let's see what we get. We get 0 equals x squared plus y squared. Yes, that's just a point. What happens if I let z equals to 1? Yeah, that's right. I get x squared plus y squared equals to 1. That's a circle. So at the value of 1, I get a circle. And you're thinking paraboloid. I get a circle. How do those work together? Stay tuned. Okay. Uh, what if I said, let's let uh, z equals to 4. Let's pretend this is 4. 1, 2, 3. This is 4 right here. Then I get 4 equals x squared plus y squared. You get a circle that is of radius 2. And the idea is if I were to connect the edges together of all these pieces, you'll see that you get this shape, a 3D shape that looks like a parabola filled in, which we call a paraboloid. Okay. Hmm. What does this represent? Think back to your math 12 days. Ah, that's a shift of one to the right. Correct. So your vertex got shifted 1 to the right, 1 comma 0, and because this is 3 dimensions, 1 comma 0 comma 0. So this is a shift to the right on the x. So we're starting here. No longer are we starting at the origin. Here is now our first point, our vertex of our paraboloid. And in this example here, I'm going to now let y be equal to uh, 1. And I'll get 1 equals to x minus 1 all squared plus z squared. That would be a circle. <laughs> Once gain of radius, 1 on the xz plane. And this is when y equals to 1. So here's y equal to 1. I'm going to draw a circle of radius 1. I could continue and make y equals to 4. And then you get, once again, a circle. Right, so one, two, three, four, radius two, so wider. And then hopefully you can visualize how this could become a paraboloid as well. Okay. And I'm gonna let you try number three on your own, please. And I want you to come back and take a look at your answer and double check with mine. Zero, 2 and 1 x y z 0 2 for the y 1 2 and 1 for the z so it's suspended in the air right here okay and hopefully you see that this one is the x value that you can let so I can let x equal to 1 or 4 or whatever and hopefully you'll see that you should get a paraboloid going like this all right all right, that's good. Oh, type number four. What's this thing? The ellipsoid? What is that? Well, think about what you learned in conics once again. Do you remember how this looks like x over 2 all squared? y over 3 all squared? z over 4 all squared equals to 1? And then this is where we had to expand, or this is like a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2 in the x. This is the vertical expansion by a factor of 3. Remember that from pre-calc 12? Well, I guess we're now we're not going to call it horizontal or vertical. We're just going to call it the x-axis expansion, right? By a factor of 2. The y-axis expansion by a factor of 3. And the z-axis expansion by a factor of 4. Meaning... 
on the x-axis. It used to be 1, now it's 2. y-axis used to be 1, now it's 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Z is now 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So imagine this. 2, 3, 4. And then we're going to try to join all these pieces together. That should be, ooh, didn't draw very well. But hopefully you can envision that this will be a, what they call a ellipsoid. This is what I call an egg-shaped graph. Egg-shaped graph. This outline in green is supposed to be like the shape of an egg. Okay, think of a 3D shape like an egg. And that's what you get for an ellipsoid. Okay, and finally then, we've got type number five, the hyperboloids. So once again, I'm going to ask you to label the axes. And then now, like the previous ones, I'm going to ask you to choose different values of z. So let z equals zero in this case. And if you do that, you get x squared plus y squared equals to one. Well, this is where we can draw a nice equation. This is a circle at, centered at 0, 0 on the xy plane. I can now do the same thing as z equals to 1. In this case, x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals to 1. Or x squared plus y squared equals to 2. So at z equals to 1, let's pretend that's here. We have another circle with a little bit wider. And then I can do the same thing at z equals to, let's say, 3, I guess. x squared plus y squared minus 9 equals to 1. That's x squared plus y squared equals to 10. So at z equals to 3, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3. Again, another circle like this. And notice I could also use negative values of z. So let z equals to negative 1. I'll actually get the same thing as this. I hope you can see why. So I get another one down here. Oops. So think of it as me extending this line. Now it's negative. And it's like this. And similarly, if I said z equals to negative 3, I'll get a similar one like that. And I hope you can see how this gets wider like this, wider, like this. And this is what we call a hyperboloid, kind of like the hourglass, but this extends forever. Okay. And then number two is something very similar. So I'm gonna let you try that because I'm tired of talking about this. I know a little bit dry, but nonetheless, this is something that sets you up for multivariable calculus because in multivariable calculus we're dealing with not just one independent variable but we'll be dealing with two all right that's a preview for next time but in the meantime graph out this one x squared plus y squared minus z squared equals negative one try it first then come back and double check please that's how you learn Huh, what's this? This is not possible. Okay, interesting, not possible. Well, how about I try z equals to 1, I guess, or negative 1, because it says squared. This is possible now, so at 1 or negative 1, it seems like there is now a... Uh, Oops, I have totally forgot. That's zero. <laughs> so it seems like there's actually a dot. Yes, a dot. Hmm. And then, of course, let's try something else. Let's try z equals to 
So we'll say 2, sure, 2 or negative 2, x squared plus y squared minus 4 equals negative 1. Now we get those circles that we were graphing out earlier. So at 2, you have a circle. At negative 2, you have a circle. And then if I tried one more, let's say z equals to 3 or negative 3. We get 8. So yeah, here we go again. But notice in this case, because this is not possible, notice that the hyperboloid looks something like this. Oops. Yeah, it looks something like this. I should say something like this. Right? Same thing here. But really, there is nothing in between 0 and 1. So if you picked any value here between negative 1 and 1, you would get an answer of not possible. That means there's nothing there. And that's why this hyperboloid is actually 2 separate pieces, disjointed. Okay, that's enough for this lesson. I hope you're not totally confused, but nonetheless, you can go try some of these. Okay.